Okay, I think we can get started. Uh, one or two more people may join. So everyone, good to see you all. Happy Monday. Um, lots happening, uh, lots of exciting things happening, a lot of moving parts. So uh, I know everyone is extremely busy. Um, so we'll try and keep this as short as possible. First, uh, I want to hand it off to Sam just so we can introduce our new friends. Hello, everybody. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm, everyone can hear me. Um, all right. So I invited Nora and Essa both to join us today um, because they're people who are joining us as uh, independent contributors, um, putting about 10 hours a week in, um, working for us to help us accomplish all of the many different things that we're trying to accomplish. So first off, we have Essa. Essa and I met uh, back in Wyoming. Uh, when I was there, and she had actually already applied for an operations associate position. Um, and so I brought her on to help us out for about, like I said, 10 hours a week. And so right now she's just helping with general logistics. So stickers, t-shirts, stuff like that, um, doing some some uh, kind of planning around some of the events that we have coming up, because as you all know, we are very busy in that field. Um, and so these are just kind of the really short, short-term things. But as we get her up to speed. Um, if you guys also have things that need to be done, remember her time is limited. Um, feel free to ping me and say, hey, does Essa have time to, to help me with this? The other person I, I wanted to introduce is Nora. Nora, is that, am I pronouncing your name correctly? I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, it's Nora. Yeah, you're saying it, Nora. right? Perfect. So Nora knows Gabe and Gabe we've been working with a little bit for, um, some of the SF uh, focused events and and community engagement, but I'm bringing on Nora um, also for about 10 hours a week to help us with event planning. So as you know, we're starting to go bigger and bigger and bigger into our events. And so we need um, somebody who can bring us to the next level. Um, you know, I've done conferences, I've done events, I've done a ton of different stuff, but I just don't have the time right now to really knock them out of the park. So even though, Leo was very happy with our event this last weekend um, at the Elk Lodge. It could have been a lot better, right, Nora? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she's helping us out. Um, right now she's already planning. We wanna make a huge splash at East Denver, um, but we're also looking at a whole bunch of other projects. Um, so as she also gets up to speed again, limited hours, but she'll be helping us out. Um, so don't, you know, don't hesitate to ping me to say, hey, we have this event, does Nora have some time? Or, hey, I, I need some, uh, a few admin uh, stuff accomplished. Does Essa have some time to do things as well? So I just wanted to invite those guys. I don't know if they'll be here every week for our all hands, but I just wanted to make sure you all knew them and knew who they were. And so I invited them today. All right, welcome. Good, good to have you both. Okay, um, anything else, Sam, while, we, while you have the mic? Any other updates from your end? Um, well, uh, some of these updates, I feel like I'm stealing some thunder because this is really Gib and Victa's uh, massive work. Aragon, um, which, we've been, which they have been working on for quite a while, is going live this week. I think Gib is doing some, some personal testing on it today. Um, and then we will, I think it'll go live live tomorrow. Wednesday. And then we're announcing Wednesday, right? But we can play right. with it on tomorrow. That's right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's exciting because uh, we're going to kick off some some really accelerated DAO processes with Aragon and then we'll be moving to of course to bring on um, DAO House and, and Coordinate as well which just exciting to see how many, how fast things move. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is uh, of course the incubator DAO is all elected and so they've started engaging and creating their list of investors and finding um, places to put and take uh, both ideas and creatives and devs, technical talents to start putting them together. Um, and so they are kicking off and they're doing a great, you know, a lot of really good work. So that's exciting to see. Um, the creative DAO, based on what they're talking about in the community forum on talk.harmony.one, looks like they are almost ready to have their election. Um, so that's exciting to see uh, about that also taking off, which means the next two that we're working on is going to be the matching DAO and the basic DAO. The matching DAO is more of a community appreciation DAO where let's say, hey, you know, give 
you did amazing work yesterday with the RPC tweet and all that work. Well, I'm going to recognize you by opening up a, a, a wallet for you and everyone can donate. And then all of you guys donate. Let's say we all donate to give 100 tokens. Um, and then the foundation would also put in 100 tokens. That's how it was discussed a month ago. Like it matches the community gift to somebody that we highlight. Um, and so that's what I'm pretty sure is how it's going to flow out as, as it kind of evolves. Um, the basic DAO has the responsibility to help setting up and run timesheets and payrolls and things like that. Um, so as you can see, the DAO-based infrastructure for our project, we're really close to having it fully operational, which is really exciting. Um, so I'll pause there. Oh, one other thing that we do have going on right now is we do have a DAO hackathon that we are sponsoring with Aragon. Um, but I have, and we have a couple of, of prizes in there for bounties. Um, and I just need to get up to speed. I just haven't had time to, to get the latest on that. Uh, another thing I'll add to that is we have two grantees right now who are actually working on a timesheet and kind of invoicing tools specifically for DAOs. Uh, one of them is actually working on, a, uh, on an add-on for Aragon. So that's going to make uh, things a lot easier, uh, managing yeah. track, uh, tracking timesheets and, and payments without having to worry about using Google Sheets and things like that. Uh, so lots of exciting things happening there. Okay, thanks, Sam. Um, mm -hmm. The next thing I want to talk about uh, is kind of our infrastructure. Um, so you may have seen all the issues we were having with the uh, RPC issues yesterday. A lot of um, our partners were affected by it. Um, so Jack, can I turn it over to you to give us a quick update on what we did yesterday and just the overall update on, on Pocket? Sure. Um, so we had some all time high problems, I guess. Uh, around Saturday night, 11 p.m. Pacific time or equivalent to UTC 6 a.m., we started seeing um, a number of big changes in behavior from um, the calls coming in into the RPC, meaning folks that are using their wallet more often or using the bridges and whatnot. Um, the behavior started changing quite a bit and that's caused uh, latency spikes that happened for approximately 12 hours. And our pocket network partners um, in the middle of that, they, they were carrying a lot of the load, honestly. Um, in the middle of that, or towards the tail end of that, um, they were also having some issues um, that they identified and root caused and fixed. So they're a great partner that have carried us um, through quite a bit. Um, and the latency is still sort of lingering on there, but we've root caused a lot of the issues and fixed it. Um, another couple of blips happened between the tail end of that event, uh, which ended around 6 p.m. UTC or 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, the team worked really hard on both ends within the Harmony Foundation and also with Pocket to solve all that. If you want to take a look at uh, what's going on live, we have a status page that you can go to. That's status.harmony.one. Any alerts that we get in on our end, that will be, it will be posted over there as well, live and automated. So if you do face any issues with your wallets, your bridge activities and whatnot, go to one to see, hey, you know what? My funds aren't lost. Um, is everything okay? Uh, is this backend systems having any issues? We're working hard to decentralize that and working well with that. So now we're back to a, a rather healthy state. Um, Pocket Networks is um, decentralizing a lot of our RPC calls. In fact, the majority of the calls are going there and community members are finding out about the Pocket Network themselves and they are creating links through their MetaMask wallets, for example, to directly connect to Pocket Networks and it's working beautifully. Um, so I've checked it out myself. It's, um, it's multiple regions and multiple cloud at the back end. Um, and we hope there'll be, over time, we'll stabilize that going forward. Our plan is also to, you know, by the end of the year, have at least another partner with us 
to decentralize our RPC calls, meaning that all of the bridge activities and wallet activities would be quicker. All, the, all of the DEX um, analytics and sushi related swaps will be quicker. Um, so hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have at least three different groups, including Harmony, hosting the RPC endpoints, if not four. So we're, we're pretty much on track to have at least three part, three of three different um, groups of um, decentralized groups of uh, node runners to help host RPC networks. That's all, all for right. me. What do you give? Great, yeah, thanks, thanks, Jack. Uh, yeah, things are looking good. Uh, Pocket's been a really incredible uh, partner. Um, they jumped on yesterday on a Sunday. They joined our uh, emergency meeting this morning. Um, so they've been very, very supportive. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update on um, our product launch dates. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all the uh, individual features and items. Um, but I just wanted to clarify one thing. Uh, I'm getting a lot of messages, a lot of DMs, a lot of excitement around a lot of the projects that were set to be released because of the dates that we had on our uh, uh, open.harmony.one. Um, I just wanted to clarify that, you know, th those dates will move uh, for various reasons. Uh, when you're working with a big project, like the BTC bridge, there are security audits that have to be performed, right? These are very important. And while we may be um, feature complete internally, we're not quite ready to go live with those, right? We have to get the audits in place. We need to get the right partners in place. There's a lot of scheduling that goes. Um, so this is for like the broader community who may be listening to this later on. Um, those dates will change. Uh, don't be upset. Uh, we are working very, very hard to make sure that these features go out, but we also have to make sure that uh, we release stable, secure products. Um, so so that, that that's my update. Uh, expect those dates to change. Uh, Wolf, you had a question? Give, can we get that written up as a blog post, maybe medium article, possibly for anyone that might have missed it or that does miss it, because I'm sure that's not a good everyone idea. will get to see this. So. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. We, we can work on that. Uh, so on that, I wanted to just get some quick updates uh, on, on a few different projects. Um, obviously, the big one being BTC Bridge. Uh, Ganesh, you want to give us a quick update on where we are? Sure. <clears throat> Let me share. Uh, we did revise. Uh the dates and uh, our plan slightly. Uh, you know, it's uh, basically we are planning to launch in like four phases. Uh, every Monday from starting with next Monday. Uh, next Monday is going to be like a internal mainnet release with the selected partner exposure. Uh, we are going to limit the TVL and uh, we are going to run all the clients. It is not going to be open for the public yet. And we hope to finish all the pending uh, tasks, task on uh, testing, contracts. And this week, we'll also ask uh, our team, internal team, to test the uh, uh, front ends and provide feedback on the user experience. Uh, November 8th, uh, Monday, we plan to, that's when the audit actually begins. Um, and and we want to still uh, aim for like first uh, public release with the uh, limited TVL and again the walls uh, relayers must be run by Harmon. It's we cannot expose uh, until November fifteenth uh, for externals, so it will be run by Harmon. Uh, but we this, this can be a first uh, public uh, release and we can support it with some uh, good campaign and market. So I'm planning this uh, two weeks from today so that uh, we can prepare some materials for the November 8th. Uh, at least two weeks uh, is uh, reasonable uh, to plan something, right? Uh, to prepare something for the marketing campaign. November 15th is when uh, audit, at least the first round of audit will be complete. And uh, uh, at all, at that's the same time we will hoping to have 
price, price feed on minute. This is a must have if uh, for us to expose the walls and relays uh, for externals. Um, so that's where we will begin onboarding external walls and relayers because right now we are confident when uh, with the chain link price feeds available. Uh, in terms of security, we can start exposing uh, externals into these uh, participating as walls and relays. And the TVL, again, I put some numbers uh, roughly based on uh, how much we are comfortable in terms of security. Uh, number 15 is when we start to externalize more and more. Um, but somewhere around number 29, we want to allow like one week to try out at least uh, how good the external uh, participation is happening and uh, revise, set the fees, for various fees in the bridge. Uh, all, all of which is going to be decided by the externals. That's uh, we want to have this uh, governance based uh, mechanism to uh, finalize uh, some of the uh, parameters related to bridge. And then finally, in uh, last week, last Monday of November, we plan to have unlimited, uh, remove the TVL limits and open it fully. And then after which uh, uh, participation from walls, relayers, externals will be all automated and without uh, us provisioning anything. Um, and that's that's where like, uh, I would say that's the current plan. Um, and uh, Yuri is also, comfortable with this. Uh, so yeah, we, we are going fully all in uh, this week uh, to get a version running on mainnet uh, next Monday. Got it. Uh, thank, thanks for that update, Ganesh. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, there are a lot of moving parts. Uh, it's not just like a, a thing that we can push out. Um, a lot of pieces to it, so which is why uh, like I mentioned before, should expect dates to be more fluid uh, because you know we want to do this right. Okay. Um, so I have a comment, Danish. So we are running the relayer. Any other components uh, run by us? Any Python run by us? This is until the uh, price feeds become available, November fifteen. Uh, we have to run the, all all the infrastructures. Uh, after that, uh, we don't plan to run any unless uh, there's a limited participation and we, we kind of have to run, then we can run. Of course, we, we can participate. Uh, it's basically driven by the demand, right? Like if more BTC is, needs to be locked, then there is need, need for more walls and then there is need for more relayer kind of. Uh, so after the mid number, like number 15, we will decide whether we need to run or everything can be run by externals. But there is no, uh, there won't be any like security limitations uh, in terms of we must run something. It's all like open yeah. public. Okay, yeah. So my point is if we need to run anything, our service, make sure I have a Jack and a Soph involved so that we have a proper monitoring and also as a, uh, some simple run book put there so that uh, we will be able to recover if we have anything. Yes. As, uh, um, okay. Yeah, November 1st is when like we will uh, start working with the uh, SOF uh, on like uh, getting, getting the infrastructure ready because we had to support two weeks uh, starting November 1st, uh, the infrastructure side. Right? Got it. Uh, thanks for that, Ganesh. Uh, Rosa, we did you want to say something? Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you had your hand up. Um, great. So uh, the other thing I wanted to just get a quick update on, uh, Boris, I'm going to pull you in. 20% UBI. Could you give us a quick update on that, please? Yeah, sure. Um, let me open it here. So... A pop quiz. Uh, I was, I was, I need to, uh, I was using one wallet to be able to get uh, USDs so I can test. So that that was done, We're not not as the last week. So now I I started to integrate TerraBridge so I can I can actually you know get get those those USDs into 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 Anchor. So, you know, TerraRich is in this process of moving from the, into the, into Wormhole. So I don't know what's the, the, 
long term strategy for us if we are going to turn or or have our own warhol whatever but in any case i'm using their their bridge to be able to to get the usds into anchor regarding anchor i started a, a i it, it, I, we are we are basically using the same strategy as eth anchor that is based in a series of bots so i'm already is have a couple of the bots up i've been testing uh i'm around you know 50 25 percent of that and also i've been uh, using using uh, ganache and just said i've been i've been testing their contracts so i can make sense of exactly how they do it right because they the even though the the code for the contracts is open source the code for the bots is not open source so we need to figure out how they do it right so i've been i've been trying to make sense of what they're doing with the contract with their own bots basically the bots what they do is they since they, they are not atomic i mean it's not like a one pass they, they have the same issue we have right they have to bridge then do do one thing they have several steps so these bots keeps track of of what is happening in each step. So that's what I've been doing. And so yeah, it's 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 moving. It's a little you know abstract because you know the bots, I mean the, it, it, they are not totally so we need to figure it out. But the, I have a good sense of the contracts right now. So I understand the I've been to the contracts so I think I'm fine. I think I'm on path to 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 make it happen. And and yeah that's it. I mean I expect okay. to if the bot Things and but a couple of weeks. I mean, I will be on time for this delivery days. Great, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> um, uh, Sam, can you give us a quick update on the grants? I know, or uh, Jack. Yeah, we can. I mean, let's be fair. So this is a process that Jack and Gib and I work on every single day. Um, but we also get uh, surprises. Is the wrong word pleasantly engaged whenever like Steven and Lee and the team go out on, on to events because they meet people and they get really excited about what they're working on. And so they say, okay, yes. And then we get a message at two o'clock in the morning in our telegram that says, Hey, let's. Uh, at least let's we can this. like give sort of like a overall highlight yeah. about what went through. Uh, maybe Sam, you can talk about uh, in general. Um, uh, yeah. What, what yeah. sort of. So every day, what ends up happening is we go into this this the this air table and we go through all of the various different grants that we've looked at. And to date, we have approved 43 grants um, for a variety of different sizes, most of them at $50,000. Um, and the main thing that we always do is we go back to, let's take this one, for example, the Harmony Universe. So what happens is they come here to our talk.harmony.one page, um, and then they apply for a very specific type of grant. Um, once we see that type of grant, we'll bump into the, the 300, um, the Harmony slash 300, and we'll go through the details of each of these particular uh, grants and find the pieces that fit. Um, nine times, well, not nine times, let's say seven times out of 10, we actually have to request for more information or highlight the fact that, okay, you're applying for a launch, but really you're uh, a bounty or you're an investment. So let's correct that. Um, in any case, the takeaway is we're going through this on a very regular basis. I'm trying to see if there's any other big questions. Um, uh, Jack, do you have something that you would like to highlight? Um, yeah, maybe just in general, the last two weeks um, have been a little bit slower than what we'd like to see. But we did go through about 20-ish uh, proposals and um, approved 12 of them. And mm -hmm. of the 12, that totals up to be what the number that uh, Sam was mentioning early, earlier, 37, right? Um, that's approximately almost $10 million worth of grants that's, that's on its way out. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, not all 10 million are given out like on day one. A lot of them have milestones to hit. You have, you have for launches, you have to hit a testnet milestone before the first twenty percent of funds are released, and so on and so forth. Um, of the ones that we've seen coming through, they were really exciting. Uh, 
I have to say, um, I, I, I do get a little bit ahead of myself sometimes. Um, <laughs> let me pull this out in front of me. Um, there was some relate, related to things that we've never seen, like payroll was one. And um, there was some institutional um, strength vaults that's in place. E-commerce was out. There was a bridge, um, some guy in the EMEA region um, creating a pretty fantastic bridge. It's going to be like Pangea all over again. If, if you guys are uh, OGs in Harmony, you, you'll sort of um, uh, feel, feel that. Um, there was a lot of NFTs, um, NFT marketplaces. There's one storyline that's an audio video NFT as well. There's quite a number of DeFi, especially in the lending part and stable coins. So those are much needed to grow the DeFi ecosystem. And really good to see like that coming online as well. And, and also another one that's a really high quality gaming that uh, that gaming uh, platform that's an auto chess um, as well. That's gonna be coming online in the next six to six months or so. Um, uh, and we also in active discussions with investors to line up um, for those that are looking for investments and um, how many is, is helping out as much as possible in that space. Yeah, that's, nice. that's pretty exciting. Yeah, good things happening there. Um, so Jack, I have, uh, a, I have a question. So you mentioned the 10 million already approved? About, about that is a nine point something. Yeah. How many projects? Um, the total number of projects that's approved are about 43. It's 43. Yeah. So, so far, 10 million already granted. Um, so there's, there's a difference between approved and funded. 10 million has been approved, and that's actually fairly easy to get to if you think about what's been approved for Abe, Curve, Sushi, and things like that. Um, like Abe said, and Curve took what, 7 million already? Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So the 10 million, including Abe and the Sushi. Yeah, correct. And Curve. Okay, I see. So basically, we, uh, for the smaller project, I got to do, because I, I knew we only spent like a 50K or something. Right, right, right. About 2.7 million, about, yeah. about almost 3 million. Yeah. So are we doing this fast enough to give out the 180 million a year? We are on pace. Uh, <laughs> I thought it's 100 million. If it's 100 million, we're on pace. 180 million, we're not on pace. Um, but yeah, 100 million, we're on pace. We're 10 weeks in. Um, is it? No, no, since September 9th. So it's only oh, six weeks in. Yeah, because I see that so, the day, like the big partner, like a RV Curve and the Sushi will bring a, a bigger impact. What's the other big uh, partner in line? That's a partner. good question when it comes to the next big partner in line. Um, one of the things that we've been talking about a lot is, okay, who are we going to go after next? Because these big ones are not just people who come to us, but they're also people that we go after. Um, so if you take a look at, I think it's, um, was it DeFi Llama, which is where we got, we want our top 10 la list to come from. We're basically going to work down that, that top 10 list um, and see what we can swing. And uh, bear in mind, it's only been six weeks. We were so busy trying to create our work stream, set up our, our guidelines and whatnot. We're in a position now that I think the inbounds are still a little bit lagging. Mm -hmm. And we will want to have more capacity to do more outbounds, but I think we're a, a couple of weeks before being able to do that. Um, I think Lee and the folks that's traveling in Lisbon are helping out a lot with the outbounds. Uh, I think one of them is a security DAO. So um, that will help our ecosystem in terms of security audits. Think of it as like a pre-audit before uh, the main audit will come around. Um, I think that's one of the big things that could be coming down the pipeline. So we're, we're not quite ready to actively go out as a committee of three of us, but they are coming. The outbounds are coming from the people actively traveling and networking right now. Yeah. I'm also seeing a lot of projects. Sorry, Sam. Uh, I was just going to say a, a lot of projects are just working independently, right? Deploying onto how many we've got. We give them all the tools they need, right? So they can actually work independently. So Hummingbot, uh, deployed on Harmony uh, went live today. 
Uh, there was very little involvement from us. Um, so, so that's exciting to see. One of the other things that we're working on is now that we have enough of these smaller grants, what we have to figure out is how to make sure we do the follow up. So we don't want to be giving a $5 million grant when we have when we haven't kind of broken the mold on how we do the follow up and how we do the um, uh, verifying that milestones are done and all those details. Um, so this is a good experience for us all to to, you know, take baby steps while we're diving into the deep end of the pool. Um, so I think we've got the approval process pretty much sorted. And now we're also working on the follow up process um, that will be sorted probably by the end of the day, because Gib and Jack are on it. So, you know, they're they always deliver on time, right, Gib? Well, we'll try. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, any other product updates? Anyone else want to mention anything before we move on? So for the cross chain NFT bridge, mm -hmm. uh, I believe the bounty is about to be closed. Um, the code will be merged, so it just uh, uh, need to be uh, deployed. So um, I know like uh, uh, Yuri and uh, Ganesh was uh, looking to that. So uh, Ganesh, what do you expect to time deploy the, the code? Uh, just to one one two days we need to test everything uh, but this week we can do it that's it okay Thanks. great yeah if you could just update the uh the, the dates when when you uh, when they change yeah. keep those up to date that'd be great yeah, yeah we can we can plan some something around it too like if you want to uh, i mean a lot of users are excited <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, so we, we can deliver that on time. So uh, one more question, Kenish. So I'm looking to uh, create more bounty about the bridge, for example, with uh, Polygon or with Avalanche, because uh, I noticed that in the community, people were asking for that. Um, do you think that makes sense to create additional um, bridge uh, bounty? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh... I mean, uh, you can create, I can revise a little bit uh, in terms of approach, but uh, we will probably also need to have some partner bridges uh, to expedite the process. For example, Polygon, Phantom, Avalanche, uh, already any swap uh, team is interested to provide bridge uh, to those chains. Um, our own uh, trustless versions, we can create bounties and get it uh, completed by externals. Yeah, our trust version part. will definitely roll out after our, our own mainnet launch on the from the server, right? So uh, I'm thinking about the, the current uh, trusted version of the bridge. Does it make sense to have a um, like EVM compatible uh, launch bridge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it makes sense uh, to extend it to other EVM chains. Right. Give. Don't we have another bounty that's running right now for a cross shard? smart contract development that's right yeah rj maybe you could actually provide an update on that one yeah it's with the um, uh, third party agency i was talking about like the mutual system um, mutual knowledge system we're already talking about like a, a just direct contract with them uh, but later on we feel it's probably better to fit that contract into the existing our 300 million grant uh, to become one of the grants, right? That's that's why we wrote that into a uh, proposal. And then uh, that's basically like a direct approval. So already approved that grant and uh, already uh, paid out like some of the initial payments for them to start. That's for the cross shard smart contract uh, design phase. And later on we'll enter the implementation phase and we'll see whether we work with them for the implementation where we do it ourselves. Yeah. Got it. Good. Any any other updates? Any questions Here, about hey. the roadmap? Cross-chain API, the UI. I post I bought some pictures on the Discord. Is you know it's moving. So we it's it's really it looks similar to the Harmony Horizon page, but you know it's it's just crushing. Also, until this week, and talking with other guys, they they seem to be taking our, our own approach. 
So I think we, we were not that far. So I think it's still more worth now completing this, this, I don't know, this, 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 this client, right? So yeah, is there this, the screenshots up there? I hope I will be able, I posted in my own Amazon account. So I will, I don't know, publish it or something by the end of the week. I've been working with this guy as a contributor in, in Colombia for the front end for, and he's working, you know, actually really good. So yeah, it's it's happening, I guess. I mean, everything seems to be in agreement, and I will as as soon as it's ready for beta, I will release and I don't know, I will try to get some promotion or something in Twitter. People know that they can actually swap from Ethereum to Binance, at least using USD. So that's that's it. Okay. That's the update on that. Thank you. Rosa. I wanted to build on top of what uh, Boris just said that we were chasing them for El Salvador for like more than a month and they were ghosting us. And today out of the blue, this guy from Colombia came and told us and uh, we found that their sponsorship ideas were not exactly the right fit for us because of the requirement like a B2B booth or things like that. But we really or strongly recommend doing something around that, not just because of the hype with El Salvador and Bitcoin, but it's more the attention with the first place in the world who there's a government willing to explore, even if it's a government or a person ruling there that I don't like. And also thinking about the community and the people there, I think they deserve always like first world solutions and not always the same problems and not having access. So if we want to do like one harmony for everybody, I think diversity matters in a project more than some other people project. So that would be my point to support Boris and El Salvador. All right. Thank you. Well, I have one uh, request. So, um, you know, towards the 100% uh, decentralization of our network, uh, one of the purposes to add an external uh, validator uh, as a leader in our allow list. So uh, I have the proposal on our forum. And uh, um, right now, we haven't got enough uh, uh, validator sign up to be the external validator. So one of, one of the suggestions from the uh, validator is that we somehow, how can we incentivize the people to uh, to be the external validator. So because right now in our protocol we don't reward uh, any additional token for the for the leader, right? So um, one suggestion is to we can delegate the additional token from our foundation to those the uh, uh, validator so that they get a uh, reward on that. So I may need to put a proposal into our own funding and the grant program as for that. Does that make sense, Sam and Jack? Yeah, it's, I think that's probably the best way to go about doing it. Um, incentivizing these validators sometimes can be a little tricky. Um, there are some politics that you are going to run into, obviously, with um, the validator DAO and who we're picking and winners and stuff like that. Um, but at the end of the day, if we want to fully decentralize, I really think it's important to get an external party being the leader. And we want to make sure it's a really, really good one. So I was going to say the same. Like the validator DAO should... You, you should probably talk to the validator down council yep. and formalize like what harmony is ready to fund and then let the validator down uh, discuss with themselves or with you no 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 this is not the validator down it's not their decision it's like a temporary stuff from the protocol level it's not uh, i would ask for additional fund to support uh, those validators become the uh, external leader no, no, I get what you mean by that part. I mean, the selection of which validator is just, uh, I think what Sam and I are, talk, are talking about. Uh, to no, 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 there's not, there's not enough interest. There's not like a lot of people apply. There is no one apply. Um, and Leo, this, I, this change I, needs I, to be compatible with um, some of the security uh, evaluations. And did you write the detail about um, like what, what the change will be like? I think we need to work together to make sure this design um, 
is safe itself, right? Because you need to consider all of this voting power, like allocation right. and stuff. And there, there, there will be a risk of like um, affecting the because, security or the live, liveness. So we need to be careful first. So it's not- And because- Yeah, we need to, we need to have the design uh, first. Um, yeah, and I, just quickly, quickly on this one, I think just to follow up on RJ's point, I think this is also in the ideal scenario, it should be a core protocol change if a leader has to be incentivized from the protocol, right? That was initial thinking. Uh, this short-term benefit for an external uh, validator to be a leader is more like a manual change. It affects economic security, but the ideal path is really the leader node or the leader actually getting some extra percentage, which is a natural incentive from the protocol. Right, RJ? Is that the... Yeah, so things things like uh, without the resharding are right now, every validator can choose which shard they can go, right? And we already see that KuCoin is choosing all other nodes to be in shard zero. They basically, if we like uh, not calculate the voting power carefully, they could totally just affect, they could influence the liveness of shard zero. Then that's not good for the network. So we, we need to consider all of these factor before we like um, are okay or feel, um, feel uh, comfortable going this route. Yeah, so at least we need to go to shard one, two, three. If it's not the shard zero, shard zero will kind of uh, um, wait a little bit more longer time. But I don't see that the reason we shouldn't uh, do it on shard one, two, three, because there are no, like, uh, that's also a learning experience for us. So regarding to Sakio's point, so we're not looking for protocol level change, that's what I said, right? So I'm asking for like external uh, way to incentivize and uh, give the people additional uh, benefit if they become an external uh, um, uh, leader. It's not a protocol level change. Protocol level change that's much more complicated. Just like a, a servant tool, the block proposal gets the most of the uh, block reward. Exactly, yeah. right, right, I yeah. agree. But that's not something we were- No, I think shard, shard one, two, three is a good idea for us to learn and see, get feedback from externals. But I definitely agree on shard zero, we have to think through uh, all these potential, uh, whether it's malicious behavior by a party who's gamified and, and probably is behaving the leader can affect the liveness for sure. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're also working with uh, our research DAO, uh, Dionysus and their team. They're actually also evaluating uh, our current security and uh, incentive kind of model. Right now, we are, we're kind of in the middle phase. So it's not fully compatible with the fully decentralized incentive model yet. So for example, we don't have the leader uh, actual reward, all of this kind of actual incentive to go fully decentralized. So right now, if we um, move too fast to the decentralization phase, you'll, you'll have security risk um, in the like um, very strict um, kind of uh, evaluation manner. Yeah, that's why Sphere right now is just like a, a allow list, kind of like a, a permissioned list. It's not fully decentralized, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, a... yeah that's, let's definitely work together on some of the detail about how, how this proposal uh, involves, right? Okay. I wanna make sure we have enough time for uh, breakout rooms. Any other things you wanna share before we go to breakout rooms? Just, we're all traveling again, Nick. Well, a lot of us are traveling again next week. It's New York City, NFT New York City. So for those of us who are staying home, thank you for keeping the um, keeping us alive, <laughs> keeping the house not burning down while we are gone. Um, so besides that, that was it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. See you all soon.